Hey everybody, welcome back to A&M Commerce. We're right next door to the Lion Room. I'm visiting with Jim Curry. This is the third segment talking about everything to do with Lion Athletics in the fall and a little bit on forward. So stay tuned. All right, you talked about high standards. Lions already have that athletically in women's soccer with their facilities mm -hmm. there and also with the softball facilities. Uh, those compared very well against anybody in Division Two. How do they look against Division One? Yeah, particularly over there. Th those are great. That softball venue is an outstanding venue. Um, so we're actually going to spend a little bit of time looking at that going into the spring uh, to see what we can do to elevate that, particularly now with 37 home games. All right, so we put out a release, 37 home games. So we, we talked about, uh, we put out the release, it was actually 33, uh, but Brittany's been working hard uh, to continue to bring games to Commerce, and so we're leaning into that. But uh, what's so cool about that, and I said this to, to our staff, I said, that is what a Division I schedule for a team in the South, a school in the South, looks like, mm -hmm. right? Early tournaments, lot, lots of, lots of uh, uh, early tournaments to bring a lot of home games here, Get, before you get into conference play, um, and so you know, and, and then some home and aways here within the state locally. So it, it's a fantastic schedule, and uh, like I said, the the impact of that is not just what we're doing in terms of the softball program, mm -hmm. but the impact that we're having on the university and on our local community to bring teams here and generate some economic impact here locally as well. And you know, when you already have some of the good stuff already done. And then it's just enhancements for the fan. When you bring recruits in and they see all that kind of energy around the facilities that their sports played in, they kind of like that. Yeah, totally. And, and I think you kind of saw that a little bit with what we did in the field house this year mm -hmm. for hoops. Um, you know, a little bit of a, very much a different uh, a setup where before it was all general admission in the field house. So a little bit amorphous, kind of not much rhyme or reason to it. So what we did is, uh, the first thing we did is we actually went to talk to our students. And we said, hey, we would really like to find a way for you to have a space, uh, to have a, a place that they can have ownership of. Mm -hmm. And if you can commit to that, then we'll commit to providing you with, you know, a better viewing experience. And so that's how they ended up on that uh, far side sideline in the TV viewing area is we, we really challenged them to step up and and uh, own that space and and by all accounts to date they've responded very well um, and you can see the student engagement growing the the the, the attendance growing uh, the amount of uh, fandom growing you know it was it was one of those games that was three or four games into the home slate and we turn around and we see a bunch of students in, in matching blue and gold overalls and we didn't orchestrate that we didn't coordinate that that was very organic but that's exactly the type of environment and, and framework we're trying to provide for them, and they've responded so well. So I'm excited to see what happens when we get into conference play. I'm excited to see what happens now that we can get the band back out there. Mm -hmm. We've had a number of uh, just, just scheduling conflicts with them for the fall, but excited to get them back out for the spring. Um, so we're, we've had a pretty good atmosphere in there uh, for the fall, so I'm excited to see what it looks like for the spring. But added the loge boxes, which was a new feature. That's uh, a real conjuring there. This is a one level building and you've <laughs> created a loge in one end. It's pretty cool. And and what was so interesting about it is, you know, we put the release out on it uh, just to just to inform our fan base, right? Well sure enough, a day later I'm getting texts from other ADs, uh, uh, folks at some conference offices, you know, just, just trying to think through how we put that together so quickly and the impact that it can have. So it got a lot of attention nationally uh, and, and was a feature story on a number of different national uh, 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 clip pages uh, for, for different uh, articles across Division One. So You wore your lion to... shirt for that one, right? Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, and then obviously on the east side, uh, trying to provide uh, a little bit more, really we didn't have reserve seating. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to be able to provide those folks that were looking for that opportunity to come in the venue, maybe get a little bit later, uh, go to the bathroom, get concessions, and go back to the seat that they were in originally without fear of it being gobbled up in a GA setting. And so that was a little bit of the, of the thought process behind the reserve seating on the east side. So we'll look to see if we can continue to improve ways there. But really, at the end of the day, it was to try to enhance uh, the viewing experience for folks there. All right, that's going to be important in a not too long because when you're bringing in Power Five schools and NCAA tournament teams, 
those tickets become, you know, you're trying to create a demand, and because of, you know, just how big we are in reality, demand can quickly outgain the available tickets at yeah, some point. Yeah, no question. And, and, you know, part of this, too, is looking a little bit into the future as well, mm -hmm. right? And we're, we're, we're in those early stages of design for a new arena, an event center uh, on the south side of campus. So, you know, that will be a, a, that will be a defining element of the, the seating experience there. So we're really trying to set the, st set the pieces in place for that uh, in preparation for that in a few years. And then, uh, you know, with the Loge boxes, uh, for example, we're going to look to try to see if we can create premium seating experiences in each of our venues mm -hmm. that, would, that would mirror that or be similar to that uh, to include softball, to include football, uh, looking ahead to next year. How would you do that in Memorial Stadium? That ultimately, when it comes down to new facilities, that will be the most expensive to replace. But to make the most of what you already have, what are some of the other, I know you were, uh, were talking about bringing in the, uh, the containers that have been converted into a bar yeah. with, a, with a deck and tables and all that. And we've seen it done other places. Yep. We didn't do it for four games. That's right. But we have more home games coming this year. That's exactly right. So we, we had a lot of discussion about that in the summer uh, when I first got here going into the year. With, with four games, a number of other changes that were already occurring, we felt like, you know, instead of trying to do 100 things okay, let's just do a dozen things really well. Mm -hmm. And so that was a little bit of the thought process, knowing that coming into this next year, six home games, uh, a great schedule, and so better, better lead time to be able to develop it and think through it fully. So uh, we're not fully done with the thought process there, but we've mm -hmm. got a few ideas already that uh, we're, we're starting to, to put the ingredients in and, and start to, to bake the cake. So we'll, we'll have some more information at that after we turn the, turn the calendar. But uh, obviously that starts with a schedule too. And so when we get to that, we'll, we'll, we'll have some fun stuff to share there. But yeah, I think part of it, just like the loge boxes in basketball, is, is looking at your existing footprint and just trying to find ways to be a little bit creative to work within that existing footprint. And that's what we'll do out of Memorial Stadium for sure. Man, can't wait. Yeah. Which, you know, it, it's just watching a little bit, a little bit here, a little bit there. The welcoming center coming in right next to the no stadium. Question. That kind of changed up uh, the, the uh, tailgating beforehand. Mm -hmm. How did it go in its new spot? Were you all happy with the, the, we the had, limited? We had great feedback on it. And, and, you know, one of the things that we thought about there was, you know, the, the alumni tailgate had moved over to the new pavilion which is a great setting, mm -hmm. and but it got a little bit disconnected from the previous footprint. So what this really allowed us to do was how could we provide some connectivity between the stadium and the pavilion and, and kind of create a little bit of, a, of, a, of experience, a connectivity there, and that's exactly what uh, we were able to do this year. So along MSC Drive, we, we sold really almost every spot along MSC Drive and then turn the corner right next to music, and then we're able to turn the corner uh, going back up towards the field house and fill in that space as well. So, uh, I mean, heck, for homecoming, we had about 75 of 90 spots sold uh, for the season. It was about half of them, and there was a number of different game day, game day sales. Um, so we felt really good about the experience, and, and based on the feedback we got from, from fans and the feedback that we got from student groups, uh, it seemed to work out pretty well. Outstanding yeah. stuff. All right, I want to go back to this because we've talked about being at A and M. We've talked about being at Tech, but what about the more of the schools that are coming here? Uh, we had Houston's women's basketball yep. here, and they did the same thing to us they did last year. Yeah, gone. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, uh, but you know, in softball, the Aggies are going to be here. Arkansas is going to be here. Yep. Um, what are some of the names that? You know, we're just playing in a different world. It's a different world, no, no, no doubt about it. So, you know, A&M women came for softball in, in, the, uh, in the fall. Women's hoops came just a few weeks ago, uh, which was fantastic. Uh, and then when we get to the spring, Arkansas will come for softball. It's a top 10 program in the country right now, um, here, playing here in commerce. And then Houston softball will also do a three-game series with us. So, uh, you know, quality Power 5 opponents coming to commerce. And then in addition to that, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go to Oklahoma this year in softball, and we're looking to see if we can get that game returned maybe in the fall next year. Um, so more more to come on that as we solidify some of the thought there. But 
um, you know, exciting to bring in the quality of opponents that we're bringing here to Commerce for sure. What about track and field? They're going to use everything in Memorial Stadium. They hosted a number of events this last spring. They don't have quite so many this coming year, but, you know, level of talent, they've got to go where the big ones are, yep. and then they can get a few of the big ones to come back. Yeah, that's exactly right. So we won't actually host a home track meet this year. Um, that's certainly not the plan long term, mm -hmm. just the way it worked out this year. But when you look at the quality of the events that the track and field teams are going to, it's some of the best competition in the country, mm -hmm. period. And so when we talk about the, the, the type of competition level we're looking for, not only are we embracing that, but our student athletes want it. Uh, there, there was a great story uh, that I recalled with someone recently. I was having lunch down in Greenville and I ran into a couple of our football student athletes. And this was around the same time that we were trying to reschedule that last game that got canceled against Northwestern State mm -hmm. when they canceled the game on us. And they asked me, they're like, do you think we're going to get a game? I said, hey, we're trying. And, and one of the students, one of the football student athletes asked me, goes, will it be a Power 5 opponent? And I'm like, well, not yet. <laughs> not yet. But he's like, you know, but you could tell he really wanted that. And, and whether it's football, basketball, track, any sport, you know, our student athletes here are as hungry for those experiences and those mm -hmm. opportunities as anybody. So it's not just looking at it as a payday. Um, not all of them come with paydays, too, mm -hmm. right? I sure. mean, the Houston one was a return game. Um, so there wasn't any payday associated with that. Uh, but our student athletes want those experiences, yeah. too. Man, it's yeah. been a busy, busy fall for you, my friend. What else is there to cover? Anything else you want to tease to anybody? Because there really are. It's just going to be some cool stuff. Yeah. Well, we can't get away. One th we, we touched on it a little bit, but uh, the football schedule. Yeah, you're going to release the entire – we've already got the conference schedule. Correct. But now all the non-conference, and that's where everybody's really looking for because that's where the big stakes are. Yeah, yeah. So the first release that, that we've got out is uh, regarding future FBS opponents. And so 2024 – That's state, plural. You said plural. opponents. Opponents, that's one. right. Not just one, opponents. But uh, 2024, opportunity to open the season at San Diego State. Um, so that'll be a great experience for our guys. Labor Day weekend, a good a good donor trip as well, potentially, right? So come out and spend Labor Day weekend in San Diego with the, with football. That's going to be a good wife trip for me. That's what I'm about to say, right? I need to spend on a couple of them. You know, you got the extra day on Monday. Come on out, enjoy some football and some beautiful weather, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so, um, as long as the dogs can go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, excited about that. Um, and... Uh, so that'll be a good one. When I got here, we actually didn't have an FBS opponent on the calendar for mm -hmm. 2024. Uh, really strange set of circumstances that, that kind of put this one together. But uh, the, the long and short is it worked out really well for us and uh, filled the need for us, filled the need for San Diego State as well. Uh, and then uh, 2025, uh, the big one, uh, going to Florida State in week two, Ooh. which will be awesome, which will be awesome. So um, one of, obviously, the most iconic venues in the sport um, a, a, just a tremendous venue and experience for our student athletes uh, and obviously a great opportunity to showcase the university and our athletics program. So really excited about uh, that one in 2025. Does Chief Osceola still throw that flaming spear into the turf at the 50 you know or just a regular non-burning spear? Oh, it's a flaming spear. Okay, all right. Yeah. That, that's just yeah. something for you to look forward to. Yeah. Jim, I don't know what else to say, but hey, I know that on behalf of a lot of Lion Boosters, I can say thank you for all the work you and your staff, the ones that you inherited, plus the ones you're bringing in, and there's still more to go. Still more to go, and, and let me echo those sentiments, right? Just just thank you to everybody out there. It's uh, not just for the welcome that you've provided to me, but how you've embraced uh, this transition, um, how you have uh, supported our student athletes and their experience. Uh, as we talked about, there's a, there's a big obligation there, but just know that the impact and the reach that you're having on our student athletes is really immeasurable in many ways. So thank you for what you do. And uh, I think there's a lot of uh, great things ahead in store for Lion Athletics as we go into 2024. All right, man, that sounds like a great way to end it, folks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And uh, we'll see you somewhere in Lion Country. Get your line. Yes, sir. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you somewhere soon. All right, go Lions.